What's up guys, top two Yu-Gi-Oh here. With the new April 2016 ban list, people are expecting the Burning Abyss gonna be one of the best decks of the format, and so with that I thought it might be helpful to make a quick guide on how to use Burning Abyss. So Burning Abyss is an archetype that was released back in 2014 in Duelist Alliance with Shadal, Satellar Knights, Yang Zings, around that time frame, and they include mostly dark level three fiends, and they focus on swarming, floating, toolboxing. So let's get into what the monsters actually do. As your monsters do most of the heavy lifting for this archetype, they do pretty much all the work. Your monsters are what you need to win. So Burning Abyss monsters all have three effects. The first one is if you control a monster that isn't a Burning Abyss monster, destroy this card. The second is if you have no spell or trap cards, you can special summon this card from your hand. And the third effect is unique amongst all the Burning Abyss monsters, and they trigger when sent to the graveyard. And they can trigger during either player's turn, whenever it just happens to be sent to the graveyard. And that can be from discarding, destroyed by battle, card effect, detaching from an Xyz monster. It doesn't matter how it gets sent to the graveyard, but if it is sitting in your graveyard, then its effect will trigger, and they cannot miss timing either. And of those last two effects, you can only use one of them per turn. So if you special summon a Burning Abyss monster from your hand, then it gets sent to the graveyard, you can activate the graveyard effect during that turn, and vice versa. If you use the graveyard effect during a turn, you can't special summon another one from your hand. And then also you can't special summon two from your hand, or two, graveyard, two of the same graveyard effects per turn. So you can only use one of the effects per turn. That's something you definitely have to be careful with. So let's get into the individual monsters. And first I'm gonna break them up into what I'm gonna call the engine burning abyss monsters and the utility burning abyss monsters. So the engine monsters are what are needed to make and extend your plays. You need these to get everything going. Your searchers, your, your floaters, those monsters. The ones that you definitely need in order to play the game. But then your utility monsters are good depending on the game state. So they might be good when you need to get rid of back row or get rid of problem monsters, burn your opponent for damage, negate effects, things like that that aren't always good, but are situationally good. Those are what I'm gonna call your utility monsters. And so let's start with the engine monsters, and those are Skarm, Craft, Seer, and Livic. And mainly the first three, but I also include Livic because it does allow you to make some plays that you wouldn't be able to make otherwise, and so I do think it's necessary. So first let's talk about Skarm. So when Skarm is sent to the graveyard, during that end phase, you can add level three Dark Fiend. So you can add other Burning Abyss monsters, or you can also add Tour Guide. And this is really important for setting up your future turns because it's during the end phase. So you, you really don't want to search what's good now, but you want to search what you think will be good in the future. And so how you play Skarm will really carve out how you do with the deck because you have to use Skarm well. Next we have Graf. When Graf is sent to the graveyard, special summon a Burning Abyss monster from your deck. When Seer is sent to the graveyard, special summoning a Burning Abyss monster from your graveyard. And then when Libic is sent to the graveyard, special summon a Burning Abyss monster from your hand and negate the effects. So for the utility monsters, you have Farfa, Alec, Calcab, Cagna, Barbar, Dragig, and Rubik. We'll start with Farfa. When Farfa is sent to the graveyard, you can banish one monster on the field until the end phase. It can be face up or face down and it does target. When you banish a face down monster, it's banished face down and returns to the field face down. Farfa is really useful because you can remove threats from the field to open up, you know, a direct attack or things like that. You can also banish your own non-burning abyss monsters to summon more burning abyss monsters to keep them from blowing themselves up. Or you might want to banish a monster that you want to keep safe. So if you have a Virgil and your opponent's trying to attack over it, you might want to banish it so that you could bring it back and then keep spinning their cards back to their deck. Or same with F-Zero. Your opponent might try to cast out your F0 and then maybe you can uh, use Farfa to banish it, comes back during the end phase, then you're good. When Alec is sent to the graveyard, you can target one face-up monster on the field and negate its effects until the end phase. That looks really good for effect negation as well. Farfa banishes the monster until the end phase, which effectively keeps it from using the effect, obviously. But Alec is another option, and sometimes Alec is the better choice, too. Especially for trigger effects, where, where they will uh, resolve even when banished from the field, that's when Alec really comes into play. When Calcab is sent to the graveyard, you can target one face-down speller trap on the field and return it to the hand. Calcab is useful not only for clearing your opponent's back row, but also for clearing your own back rows against so you can special summon your burning abyss monsters. I find Calcab to be really clutch when you have a twin twisters and Calcab in hand. That lets you clear three back row, which is <laughs> pretty insane. Next we have Cagna. When Cagna is sent to the graveyard, you can send one burning abyss spell or trap from your deck to the graveyard. Really good for setting up good and evil for one, but then you can also set up Fire Lake and Traveler if your Dante gets sent to the graveyard. When Barbar is sent to the graveyard, you can banish up the three burning abyss cards from your graveyard and inflict 300 damage for each one. And yeah, you can banish spell and traps as well. So if you have a Fire Lake or a Traveler, in your graveyard you can banish that and then usually with barbar you only want to banish multiples and then your utility cards especially if you have multiples of them i've won so many games off barbar like usually when your opponent gets i'd say about 2700 or less they're in barbar range so when they're in barbar range you can usually win games within the next turn or two 
simply from just resolving Barbar a few times. Definitely one of my favorite uh, Burning Abyss monsters. When Draugr gets sent to the graveyard, you can take one Burning Abyss card from your deck and put it on top of your deck. And it doesn't have to be a monster either, so you can also put uh, Fire Lake or Traveler on top of your deck if you please. Draugr is not as popular as the other ones because, I mean, you're only putting it on top of your deck so you still have to draw it next turn or mill it. So it's not the best effect. But it's another Burning Abyss name, which is important sometimes. Then finally we have Rubik. Rubik actually doesn't have a unique effect, but it is a tuner. So Rubik is good when you need to summon Virgil, pretty much. So now let's move on to the extra deck. And so the first card that we all know and love is Dante, Traveler of the Burning Abyss. Dante is really, really good. I mean, it's got 2,500 defense, which is a problem for a lot of decks. But also it's effect that you can mill three up to three cards from the top of your deck to the graveyard. That effect's extremely powerful for getting all of your other Burning Abyss monsters going. It's also good that you don't have to mill three, but you can mill up to three because sometimes you only need to trigger the effect that's attached to the Dante, but you don't want to mill that many cards. So just milling one a lot of times is really useful. And again, Dante is important because it gets the engine going. Next, we have Virgil. Virgil is the only synchro monster. Virgil's effect is that you can discard one Burning Abyss card to target a card on the field and shuffle it back to the deck. Really good for getting rid of Cosmo Town. It's good in the mirror match for getting rid of your Dante's, Beatrice's, other things that you don't want to hit the graveyard. Virgil's really good for that. And Virgil can also be revived off of Seer, which is <laughs> really useful. Also, Virgil can be summoned from Beatrice. Next, we have Dante, Pilgrim of the Burning Abyss. And albeit very hard to summon naturally, <laughs> usually the only way you're going to summon is off of Beatrice's effect, but the on-field effect is very good. First, it can't be targeted, and then you can also discard a Burning Abyss card to draw a card. And that's during either player's turn. And so that means you can pretty much trigger Burning Abyss effects whenever you need to. Which is really useful as well as it helps you draw into your side cards or other engine cards that you need. Or sometimes just whatever out you possibly need to, to win, Dante helps you draw into them. Because since your Burning Abyss effects are going to trigger in the graveyard anyways, you're pretty much drawing for free. And hey, free cards are my favorite kind. And finally we have Beatrice. Beatrice is probably the central focus of the deck now. The deck used to be all about Dante, but now that Beatrice is out, it's a lot better just to you know send specifically one card from your deck to the graveyard versus randomly milling three. So Beatrice has become really the, the focus. It's it gets all of your uh, all your plays going and really allows you to utilize your utility cards. But Dante, it's hard to you know it's hard to control when when you're gonna mill a Farfoot to banish something or an Alec or Cow Cab. And so that's why people didn't play them. But now with Beatrice, during either player's turn, you can send to the graveyard whatever effect you need, and it really gives the deck a lot of versatility. And then on top of that, if they do get over Beatrice, they're gonna be able to summon Pilgrim or Virgil or Dante. Well, either Dante. So <laughs> Beatrice is really important to the deck and I think the, the best card in the deck. And not only that, but the best card of the format. So let's get into the spells. There are only two spells. One's a fusion, one's a ritual. You should probably never be using these to summon anything. And I mean, they're both pretty obvious. The fusion spell, they both have effects that are pretty coherent with all other fusion and ritual spells so i'm gonna skip those parts so you have good and evil the burning abyss when good and evil is in the graveyard except during the turn it's sent there you can banish it discard one burning abyss monster and then add a burning abyss card from your deck to your hand really good for triggering a burning abyss monster that's in your hand while adding something like a fire lake or a traveler or just another monster that you might need to summon or do whatever with it gives you a lot of versatility because it can search anything and then the cost of discarding one burning abyss monster isn't that bad because you're triggering that effect as well and then we have terminus of the burning abyss and again it's the fusion spell it does what all other fusion spells do but in the graveyard you can banish it except during the turn it's sent to target one burning abyss monster in your side of the field and it gains 800 attack and defense until the next end phase this effect is really good for getting over things like dark destroyer or monarchs my only problem with this is that you have to target a burning abyss monster which means you can't use it on Beatrice. But it is a, a decent option for getting over Dark Destroyer, Monarchs, things of that nature. So it's not a bad card, it's just not super useful either. For the traps, there are two of them as well. There's Traveler of the Burning Abyss, and then there's Fire Lake of the Burning Abyss. So Traveler summons all Burning Abyss monsters that were sent to the graveyard this turn in defense. Traveler is amazing because it, it, you can summon as many as you want. So you can pretty much fill your board up for free and then go into Dante's or other Xyzes that you need to. Or you can bring back multiple Dante's. Traveler is very powerful if you can get the effect off. Next we have Fire Lake of the Burning Abyss. It's sort of like Icarus Attack, but for Burning Abyss monsters. So it's a 3 for 3 destruction trap. You destroy two of your Burning Abyss monsters to destroy three cards in the field. It's a pr it's pretty much a blowout against Pendulum decks and most Rogue decks, because you can just pop scales and something else. Next, I just want to talk about some a little bit of tech. Not Burning Abyss monsters, but you know they're very useful for the deck. The first being Fiendish Rhino Warrior. When Fiendish Rhino Warrior is face up on the field, all other Fiend monsters can't be destroyed by battle or card effect, which means your Burning Abyss monsters won't blow themselves up, which is really useful because it's... 
you know, you can summon it, special summon Burning Abyss monster, and then it, it won't die, you can go into Dante. But the other effect is what's even better. So when Fiendish Rhino Warrior is sent to the graveyard, you could send one Fiend monster from your deck to the graveyard, which means you can send any of your Burning Abyss monsters. So pretty much when you mill Rhino Warrior, or you send it to the graveyard to attach it or whatever, it pretty much is whatever Burning Abyss monster that you want it to be. Because you can just send it from the deck to the graveyard. It's also really good when you have non-Burning Abyss monsters on the field and you need to summon Burning Abyss monsters. So you might have Beatrice on the field, which isn't Burning Abyss, so your, uh, your other Burning Abyss monsters will blow themselves up. But if you have Rhino Warrior, you could summon that first and then summon your other Burning Abyss monsters and they'll be good. Next card I want to talk about is Tour Guide. We all know what Tour Guide does. Special summon one fiend, level three fiend from your deck, and its effects are negated. Really important that it negates the effects, because that keeps it from blowing itself up, and it's a one card Dante. Next we have Speedroid Terror Top. You can special summon it when you have no monsters, and when it's special summon, or a normal summon, add a Speedroid from your deck to your hand, which combos with Speedroid Takatomborg, which is when you have a wind monster, you special summon itself from the hand, which means when you just have Terror Top, you can special summon it from your hand, add a Takatomborg, special summon Takatomborg, go into Dante. So it's another one card Dante, pretty much, which is really useful in the deck. And another good thing about Terror Top is that it's not only wind special summon, but also when normal summon. So you might have a Beatrice on board, or you know whatever or dante you don't have to just special summon it when you have no monsters you can also just normal summon it at the taketan board summon it go into another exes so the speedory engine is very very useful so now i want to talk about how you need to use your utility cards so i already talked about the difference between an engine card and the utility card but now we need to know how to use them and before that you also you need to know your deck list very well you need to know how many of a certain card you have in your deck first of all if you chain Beatrice's effect to something, it'll be chain link 2 most likely, and then whatever you send will activate in a separate chain, meaning you won't be able to negate something. See, you can't use Beatrice to send Alec to negate something, like to chain and negate something. So the timing is very important too. So say, for example, you're playing against Monarchs, and your opponent summons an Edia, you chain Beatrice's effect. So chain link 1 is Edia, chain link 2 is Beatrice. The chain will resolve backwards, so Beatrice will first send Alec, and then Edia will resolve summoning Eidos. But because it activates in a separate chain, you can't negate that Edia. So that's important to know. However, in that situation, it is good to still send Alec, because you can use Alec to negate the Eidos to keep them from summoning again. But it's important to know that you can't just chain Beatrice to send whatever and negate it within the same chain. So if, uh, if your opponent summons a Deep Sea Diva, you can't send an Alec to negate that. However, if your opponent does summon Deep Sea Diva, what you can do is... You can still send Alec via Beatrice, and then have that negate the Neptibus, or you can send Far for them to banish the Neptibus. So you still have options, and it's important to know that you can do that, but you just won't be negating the Deep Sea Diva. So I'm gonna list a few common situations and how you should be, you know, responding to them with your Beatrice, because. Ideally, Beatrice is your offense and your defense. It does everything for the deck in your and your opponent's turn. So, for example, your opponent summons Edia, like I just said. Again, the proper move is to dump Alec with Beatrice's effect, and then using Alec to negate the Eidos to keep them from summoning again. Now, let's say your opponent's about to Xyz or Synchro summon. You don't know what that monster is going to have. You don't know what they're going to go into. So you don't know if it has a trigger effect or an ignition effect or anything. But in that situation, it's usually best to dump Farfa and then banish one of the materials. Usually the tuner if they're going to do a synchro summon. If it's an Xyz monster, it's kind of harder to say which you should be banishing. But banish one of them so they can't go into it. If you're going against Draco Pals, you might want to banish the Ignister as they summon it. Or banish the Luster Pendulum. And along with that... If your opponent summons a monster with an ignition with an ignition effect, meaning they have to activate it, it won't trigger once they summon it, it's really good to, in response to the summon, use Beatrice's effect to send Alec or Farfa, so you can either negate the effect or banish the monster to keep it from using the effect. So now let's say your opponent summons a Cosmo monster, like a Farm Girl or Tin Can or something like that. What you usually want to do is wait until they summon the ship and then dump Seer to revive Dante. And then that way, if you're they're summoning a Dark Destroyer, they might destroy your uh, your Beatrice, which helps you float into Dante, and then you can make F-Zero. Another thing is if your opponent has Monarchs, and they're going to use Monarch Stormforth, you can always send Farfa to banish your Beatrice to keep them from tributing Beatrice. Then it'll just come back in the end phase. It won't have any material, but you can still <laughs> not get it tributed for something as as well if your opponent some like tribute summons a monster like a say an ether and they just have a big monster on board what you could do is dump skarm and then during their end phase get rubik and then you could go into virgil or if you just get any burning abyss monster and then go into break sword however if they have domain up then 
it's probably GG at that point. Now, if your opponent has a Beatrice, you'd also want to send Farfa to get rid of the material. So you send Farfa, target Beatrice, and then when Beatrice is banished, they lose the material. All Xyz monsters lose the material when banished. So then after after getting rid of the the, the uh, Beatrice Xyz material, then you want to go into Virgil and then just spin it back to the extra deck. That or go into F0 and kind of play around it. But either one works. If your opponent has a lot of back row, you might want to dump Cow Cab. Uh, Cagna is usually not that good in many situations. And then, like I said before, when your opponent gets, I'd say around 2700, that's when you start dumping Bar Bar. You start going in the Bar Bar time. Usually with your Beatrice, you might have two to three material, and that's two Bar Bars and a Seer to revive that Bar Bar. That's 2700, <laughs> and that happens a lot. And if you only play one Bar Bar, then you still have. You know, that one bar bar in deck and then seer. Or you could detach Dante, you get back the seer, or you get back a bar bar. But when your opponent's life points get low, that's when bar bar is really useful. So now let's talk about starting the engine, aka the early game. So in your first turn, your goal should be to summon Beatrice and then trigger Skarm. Once you do that, Beatrice will allow you to play on your opponent's turn and Skarm will set you up for all of your future turns. So that's all you need to win for the most part. First thing you need to do is think about Skarm. So do you have Skarm in your hand? If not, how are you going to get Skarm in the graveyard? That determines how you use your Dante. I'm going to assume that you're going to be able to at least make one Dante on your first turn. If not, you got to change up your deck a little bit. <laughs> You should be able to make Dante every turn one. So if you do not have Skarm, then you need to go into Dante and mill three. And uh, that'll give you a better chance of getting Skarm. Now, if you have a Rhino Warrior or a Graph, that's four cards that can be Skarm if detached. So in that case, if you have a Rhino Warrior or a Graph, you don't need to mill three, but rather you can mill one and just mill that Rhino Warrior or the Graph and either summon it via Graph or send it to the graveyard with Rhino Warrior. The reason you don't want to mill three is that you risk milling things like speed roids or other burning abyss effects that you don't want to trigger however you need them in the deck so that you can send them from beatrice so you don't want to just waste your burning abyss monsters for the sake of getting them in the graveyard because it's the early game you're not going to be bar barring your opponent anyways so there's no point in milling off half your deck so if you have rhino warrior or graph you only need to mill one if you don't mill three and just to give you a little stat for that if you have 35 cards in your deck so assuming you're going first 35 cards in your deck and you do not have rhino warrior skarm or graph then there is a a 50 percent chance actually 49.9 percent chance that you will mill it off of a dante if you mill three because you have seven targets between the rhino warriors graphs and the skarms now if you do have skarm then that makes everything a lot easier because you can just go into your beatrice and then during your end phase get your search that's all you need to do sometimes you don't even need to trigger dante because again you don't want to be wasteful all of your utility monsters are a lot better in the deck than they are in the graveyard now during your end phase with that skarm effect it's usually best to search a seer because if your beatrice gets destroyed that's gonna allow you to go on the pilgrim and you can use pilgrim's effect to discard the seer bring back your dante and then during your next turn go on to another beatrice so seer is something that you'll be able to trigger from your hand and that's why seer is usually ideally what you should get off of your off of your skarm if you have a twin twisters then it might be better to get something like a a cow cab just so you can you know hit more back row with the twin twisters or maybe a graph or, an, or it's still seer seer is still actually pretty decent in that situation as well because you might want to send you might want to detach Dante to send Skarm to use Skarm during your opponent's turn, then discard the Seer for Twin Twister, pop two, then you Seer bring back that Dante. So it does depend on your hand what you search, but usually you want to, I think Seer is usually the best in most situations. Now during your opponent's turn, your goal is to disrupt them and then also trigger a Skarm. You want to trigger Skarm on you, your first three turns ideally. Your first three turns should consist of Skarm. <laughs> and so during your opponent's turn, if you can send the Skarm, if that resolves and your opponent doesn't have too much back row, usually Tor God's a really good option because that's going to get you a, a free Dante. Dante, which can also be a second Beatrice and if you can summon double Beatrice it, it's gonna be hard to lose at that point so during your opponent's turn if you can trigger Skarm for tour guide you're gonna be in a very good position and if they do have back row during your turn you can still just uh, send the cow cab bounce at least one of the back row maybe be able to go off and if you can't go off you still have Beatrice on board so again just to reiterate on your first turn your goal is to summon Beatrice and to trigger Skarm be careful of over milling if you don't have to so if you already have Skarm you don't need to mill for Dante then during your opponent's turn you want to disrupt their plays with Farfa, Alec, cow cab and then if possible send the Skarm during their end phase and then use Skarm to get a tour guide that's the ideal situation so now let's talk about keeping the engine going so now that you've got everything set up you need to you know you somehow you need to get from turn one and two to victory so now you need to go off and you have your beatrice on board a really common play is that dump farfa to banish your beatrice and then go off with the burning abyss monsters in your hand and then you'll get beatrice back during the end phase and this is especially useful when your beatrice only has one material anyways and you need to get it out of the way so you can go off with your ba monsters because you don't want them blowing themselves up another thing is if you if you do get the tour guide from the skarm during your opponent's turn 
and you should be able to win very swiftly because that's a free dante another beatrice so you usually set up from there also when you're playing the deck it's important to cycle through your cards you never want to run out of resources which is a very common problem because you do only have two seers and one graph so you have to keep them going so the way i think about it is when you use your dante effect in the graveyard you should usually be adding back seer or graph and then when you use seer effect you should almost always be getting back dante and then the only time where you're not getting seer or dante off either of the effects should be when you need to use the utility effect so you might not summon a dante off of a seer but rather get a bar bar when you need to burn for game or you might not add back a, a seer from dante when you need to bar for one of their monsters to attack for game so it's important to again realize when you need to use your utility monsters but aside from those situations it's very important that you dante for seer and seer for dante and kind of keep that loop going and the way i kind of think of graph is more or less not for swarming although it is good for that i think of graph as an engine monster that can beat any of your utility monsters so sometimes you might not have the beatrice on board but if you can if you have graph then you can still you know go into an alec or a farfa if you need it or a cow cab things like that so now let's talk about ending the game so the deck has a couple win conditions the first one and usually this is what happens is that you just outgrind your opponent most of the ba monsters float and so in most cases you can just outgrind your opponents just through them wasting resources to get through your field and you're just not really losing anything you're playing with free cards you got house money so that's usually how you win that can also otk a lot of times on an open board if you go double dante and Asim golem that's exactly 8,000. you can also do a lot of damage if you push through farfa so your opponent only has maybe one monster in the board you can just banish it and attack through it something else you have is bar bar like i said before when your opponent gets in 2700 life points or below that's bar bar range and so that's another way to end games fairly quickly and the good thing about bar bar is it doesn't interact with your opponent so you don't have to attack or anything like that you just dump bar bar and there's not many there's not many things your opponent can do to stop that and then you also have nightmare shark so nightmare sharks are rank three xyz that you can detach for and it lets you attack directly so that's pretty good for ending some games and then there are also numerous other ways you can win like i said this deck is really grindy and so i mean a lot of duels can be long and you're gonna win in some obscure ways that's kind of the fun and everything all right guys so let's get into some duels to actually see how the deck should be played so first duel we're going against water and we open up three burning abyss so we can go into dante and then one of them is skarm so we can get the skarm search in the end phase then having solemn warning and maxi on top of that is icing on the cake so we're gonna go ahead summon both of our monsters go into dante then beatrice set the trap then during the end phase search seer via skarm now we're gonna chain maxi to one for one then when he summons the Teus, we're gonna use solemn warning and that gives us a chance to use beatrice to dump both farfa and skarm farfa can banish the neptibus then skarm can get his tour guide in the end phase and at that point our opponent scoops it up because we're gonna just blow him out the next turn so on to the next duel we're going against black wings and again we open up enough burning abyss to go into dante beatrice and then trigger skarm i screwed up this time by actually using dante's effect and i milled a taketan borg which sucks but it doesn't matter in this game so we're gonna use beatrice to dump skarm to again set us up in the end phase and beatrice is gonna float into dante pilgrim then pilgrim can use the effect this card the seer that we searched in our first turn to revive that dante so we ended the first turn with four cards we're starting our next turn with eight cards so that's just an example of how your resource management can win and lose you games so we're going to twin twister away that back row go into bar bar via graph then use seer again to get the dante go into a second beatrice now we're going to start putting damage on board so bar bar to get the easy 900 attack over both his monsters and now we have beatrice set up for disruption a face down and Valor. So there's nothing they can do. So again, on to the next one. So this time we're playing against another Burning Abyss player. And he's going to go into his turn one Dante and set some back row. Get his Skarm search for Tour Guide. So first thing we're going to do is get rid of that back row. Get the Skarm going and play our Terra Top. This is why the Speedroid engine is so good. Because it's a one card Dante that doesn't use your normal summon. So this helps us go into a double Dante. I end up milling off the first Dante because I want to get Farfa in the graveyard to push for damage. Which we do. That puts him... Less than 3,000, so I'm going to call that Barbar -bar range. So this game is going to end on Barbar. -bar. So we go into the Beatrice, which will actually set us up for another Barbar. -bar. Get the Skarm Search in the end phase. Now the opponent has a tour guide. So they're going to go into their Dante, and they're going to get a whole bunch of effects. They're going to try to banish the Beatrice, but we're going to chain Beatrice effect to dump Alec and Farfa. So Alec will negate the uh, Dante who's used his effect to put his attack down to 1,000. Then Farfa will banish their other Dante so they can't go into Beatrice on top of that. So he goes into his third Dante, mills three, gets all their effects. Now he's going to try to go into a Virgil, but he doesn't have enough Burning Abyss monsters in his hand to use the effect. And even if he did, he can only put 6,000 on board, which is still enough for me to Barbar -bar for game. So we go into Beatrice, discarding the Barbar. -bar. So we're going to use Barbar's -bar effect. And I have the option to attack over the Dante for game. But like I said before, we're going to end this with a Barbar. With a -bar. -bar. <laughs> So during his turn, Barbar -bar again. So I'd advise everybody to just try the deck out. I'm going to put a little deck profile on the screen real quick. So check that out. Just give you an idea of how to build a deck, where to go from there. And really just get experience playing a deck. The best thing you can do for learning a new deck is playing with it, to be honest. So that's what you should be doing. So go ahead and get to that. And I'll see you guys later.